Hola, welcome to Clear Vision. My name is Simon and all the videos that I make here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. As always, please like and subscribe. It keeps me running the channel. And if you have any um, subjects that you want me to talk about or address or you want to make any comments, please feel free to do so in the comment section. Today, I wanted to talk about narcissists. I've done, I've done quite a few videos on uh, relationships with narcissists, but today I wanted to discuss the uh, evolution of a narcissist, how a narcissist comes about, and why this is really, really useful information to know, Re really, really handy knowledge, if you are in a relationship with a narcissist or have dealings with a narcissist. But at least if you are watching this video and maybe learning from it, you can see why they are reacting the way they are, which then kind of prepares you for ways to approach the narcissist when you're um, interacting with them. Um, and it's not to say to avoid triggers, but uh, um, uh, to maybe change the way you approach them in order to be able to protect yourself from their wrath, um, their extreme reactions. It also, for many people, especially in a relationship, a close relationship with a rela uh, narcissist, you know, this is the other thing. And, and this one I find particularly sad. A narcissist will never accept love. You will never love a narcissist into healing, into wellness. It cannot happen. They cannot, no matter how much love you offer them and you give them, no matter how true and genuine it is, they will never ever accept it because your love offers the potential for hurt. It also offers the potential to expose the true vulnerable self, undeveloped child, that inner child, which is so petrified um, and insecure. Your love threatens that to be exposed, which then brings vulnerability. And nobody on this planet particularly likes being vulnerable, especially someone who has an arrested development of their true self and has built up an entire false self around themselves. And it's all on an unconscious level. Um, so you will never, you will never be able to love a narcissist and get that back genuinely because you are always dealing with the false sense of self. You will never be able to reason with one because you're always dealing with the false sense of self. You're never dealing with the true person. Um, so therefore knowing this means you can engage your movements. Narcissists, how do they come about? Um, well, they start off as children. Narcissists are not um, born, they are uh, created that way. They're, the environment creates them. Uh, have a fragile and brittle false sense of self, which surrounds them. Imagine it like an eggshell, okay? So it's, it's, it's quite hard, but it's also brittle. It's, it doesn't take a whole lot to pierce through it. Underneath that shell is a lot of space and inside at the, se uh, at the center of it is the true self. And the true self is completely neglected, okay? So when you're dealing with a narcissist, you are never dealing with the true person. You're dealing with a false, you are dealing with a false self, okay? That's the first thing to understand. Now, how does this false self develop and create the narcissist, which then We'll, you will see and I'll be able to explain why narcissists have such extreme behaviors when you, they are challenged. So the first, and no, I'm not trying to get you to feel sorry for narcissists at all, but to have a level of understanding of what's going on is always good in terms of how you can handle yourself when you're dealing with them. The first way that this false sense of self is created comes from, oh, let's say, over-loving over, uh, over -loving parents, okay? So they're giving the child, they're telling the child that they're, it's like little emperor syndrome. You're amazing, you're wonderful, you're omnipotent, there is no, you know, and the child ends up ruling the family home. There is nothing you do that is wrong, uh, you're absolutely amazing, and they're given from the external environment this completely false sense of self, exaggerated, inflated, false sense of self. This can also be exaggerated if um, one parent openly chastises another parent, the other parent, or someone else within the uh, uh, close circle for 
um, giving um, the child maybe um, a, a realistic and maybe slightly more negative perception and feedback, criticism, you know, oh, you, you could have tried harder there. Bang, in comes the, the other parent and completely chastises that parent for daring to even say that this child may well be, um, well, I'd say actually normal and um, have some struggles. So that's the first that's the first way that a narcissist can be developed. And the, the other way that a narcissist can be, that is developed, comes from the complete opposite. Um, so the environment is hostile, abusive, and neglectful. This is quite important, neglectful. So there is no, uh, again, the, the self, the, the, the uh, feedback that comes from the environment is completely exaggerated. So it's like, you're worthless, you have no worth, nobody loves you, you're not worth loving, um, you have no talent, you have no value, you have nothing. Okay, so the child can then react to this in two different ways. First of all, the child can um, crumble underneath this and end up with, yes, very, very low self-worth, no value, end up, um, you know, self-abusing, um, you know, self-harm, all sorts of stuff, and depression, all sorts of very, 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 very um, depressing things can happen that they, the child will end up doing to itself. Or the child can react in completely the opposite way and will begin to give itself the mes messages of self-worth to counter the ones that are coming from the environment. So we're going to say, and, and it's kind of like this almost Kleinian uh, uh, paranoid schizoid um, split, where, well, if, if um, you're all amazing and I must be terrible, but that gets flipped around. I, I'm amazing, you're all terrible, okay? And this is what the child does. I'm amazing, I'm wonderful, da, 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 and it's a complete counter. It's, it's a defense mechanism kicking in against the environment, okay? But what happens in both scenarios, and just to reiterate, scenario A, the first scenario, the, the environment gives, so it's a, the message of inflated sense of self, the false sense of self comes from the external. Um, and it's given by the external. In the other scenario um, and way that a narcissist comes to be, the uh, messages come from within, in um, opposition to the messages that are coming from the environment. Then that creates this false sense of self. And this false sense of self keeps being developed. So the child, as it grows up, will begin to look for more situations, more people which um, confirm that which it's either telling it's that, that which they're telling themselves or that which the environment has been telling them okay so um they will build themselves as successful put themselves in position or positions of power and dominance etc etc to keep reinforcing those those messages that they are that they are receiving or giving to themselves that they are amazing omnipotent um all powerful all knowing, etc., etc. All the time it's doing that, it's building layers to this false sense of self, um, and each one is actually fragile because it's it's superficial. It's it's not true. It's not re it's not co uh, congruent to reality. So they're building up this false sense of self, um, and and compounding it and uh, or, or um, bolstering it, which is why when a person from their environment comes forward and gives them a less, uh, let's say, a more realistic perception, perhaps, some critical feedback, um, as helpful as it may be, or you leave them in a relationship, you attempt to reject them somehow, you call them out on their behavior, um, you achieve more than they do you are um, perhaps you are more beautiful than they are in their eyes or perhaps other people say it um, or perhaps or maybe you say it, I don't know um, but somehow um, there is a message coming from the environment which threatens the self-perception now remember the self-perception is grandiose and overinflated they've built it this way and again it's either been, the catalyst was it's either been given to them or they've been completely neglected and they've given it to themselves. 
but your actions, your interactions with them, if they are perceived as a threat, what you are doing. So if you reject a narcissist, if you stand up to a narcissist, if you criticize a narcissist, you are threatening to pierce through that fragile, brittle shell that they have, smash through that. And of course, when you smash through that, inside is a vulnerable child. A vulnerable child that never got nurtured. Oh, is that right, English? Yeah, that was never nurtured correctly. That was never developed. Um, because if a child receives messages from its immediate environment that are inflated and grandiose, then the, re, the, the true self, the true self which is developing, becomes stunted, arrested. It's like an arrested development. The false self begins to be built up around it. And the more that happens, the more further away from the true self, the real self, the, the false self becomes. And the same with the neglectful environment, the messages are coming from self. And as I said, and I know I'm repeating myself, the, the individual, the narcissist, will then seek out all of that confirmation all the time. They need that, that's that narcissistic supply. They need that, they need that feedback from the environment. And if you threaten that supply in any way, shape or form, they will try to annihilate you. They want to get rid of you because you threaten to smash through that false self, that defensive shell, that shell which is, and if you imagine if you do that to an adult, I mean any adult, um, if you smash through someone's false sense of self, what's left is something very small and very vulnerable, um, which needs nurturing. And of course, they've not had that. Because if you get the, um, the, the parent giving all of this, you know, love and adoration, etc., etc., it's it's actually not nurturing. It's not nurturing. It doesn't help that individual grow. It doesn't help that child grow because it's 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 actually fostering the growth the growth of some idealistic um, image that that parent thinks that child is. The other way, the the child is being given this negative um, uh, uh, feedback from the environment as a child and so therefore begins to in order to counter that begins to foster their own um, false sense of self uh, grandiose sense of self and again it's it's fostering something which isn't real so the real the real vulnerable child never gets developed never gets nurtured never gets the chance to grow now but what you're dealing, but then what you're dealing with once they're an adult, once that child becomes an adult, is something that is a narcissist, which is something quite sinister, which is a person that has quite sinister behaviours, has extreme behaviours, is extremely manipulative and controlling. But at least if you are watching this video and maybe learning from it, you can see why they are reacting the way they are, which then kind of prepares you for ways to approach the narcissist when you're um, interacting with them um, and it's not to say to avoid triggers but uh, um, uh, to maybe change the way you approach them in order to be able to protect yourself from their wrath um, their extreme reactions it also for many people especially in a relationship a close relationship with the rela uh, narcissist you know this is the other thing, and, and this one I find particularly sad. A narcissist will never accept love. You will never love a narcissist into healing, into wellness. It cannot happen. They cannot, no matter how much love you offer them and you give them, no matter how true and genuine it is, they will never ever accept it because your love offers the potential for hurt. It also offers the potential to expose the true vulnerable self, undeveloped child, that inner child, which is so petrified um, and insecure. Your love threatens that to be exposed, which then brings vulnerability. And nobody on this planet particularly likes being vulnerable, especially someone who has an arrested development of their true self and has built up an entire false self around themselves. And it's all on an unconscious level. Um, so, you will never 
You will never be able to love a narcissist and get that back genuinely because you are always dealing with the false sense of self. You will never be able to reason with one because you're always dealing with the false sense of self. You're never dealing with the true person. Um, so therefore, knowing this means you can engage your movements. I'm going to now add, it's a slightly different video which I recorded earlier, so I probably got a different t-shirt on. And I'm going to, and my hair is probably different. <laughs> Um, I needed to redo this one. So I'm going to add that on to the end of this and then I will also upload that as another um, separate video in itself where I address the love bombing, stonewalling, uh, manipulation tactics, etc, etc that narcissists employ in relationships. So I'm going to address all of those um, in this next video which I'm going to add on and I'll also upload that as a separate video in the following week or something. Um, I hope this helps um, and uh, please feel free to leave some comments in the comment section and subscribe and until next time um, please take care of yourselves. Adios.